Alright, so uh, I'm finally getting around to talk about the planer I got at auction uh, last weekend. I scored it for uh, $70. I think uh, I think this should go for around maybe $200. Uh, it's a 5 horsepower fully bell saw planer. Uh, 12 inch uh, cut width. You can see it's got a, the three phase um, engine or motor on the back. If you ever ever wonder what you, what kind of motors on these things, you can always look. There should be one of these metal plates on it, and it'll tell you what what you got. I don't know if this one works yet. I haven't had a chance to fire it up. There's uh, some grain and stuff in the fan and uh, on the fin the the heat fins and whatnot. So I'm not sure if. Uh, if it works yet. I'm not too worried. I'm actually considering running it off of um, gas uh, when I get down to it. Uh, it's got a pretty good long, I think this is probably, what is this, 8 gauge or 10 gauge? It's probably 10 gauge. Yeah. No, it's a 12 gauge. Shoot. So yeah, 12. it's a 12 and 3, 12, 12 gauge, uh, 3 wire three phase uh, cable that goes to it um, the reason I bought it is these old school planers um, they're you can maintain them like you can fix them if you if you look at the new planers the plastic stuff you get at Menards and um, I don't know anywhere Home Depot Ace whatever even the DeWalt ones they're you can't really maintain them they're they're not they're once they're broke they're broke uh, and they have a lot of plastic parts and stuff. You can see on this one, um, everything's accessible, everything's fixable, uh, as long as you have the tools to fix it. I mean, the belts are good, it free spins, the bearings are in good condition. Uh, I don't know, the blades aren't that great, uh, but like this planer, this is actually a planer molder. I can take these blades off, I'm gonna take these blades off. Um, and refinish all this stuff, resharpen it. Uh, I'm not sure about these rollers here yet, uh, how well they work. I might have to replace them or figure something else out. But uh, like I was saying, the reason I bought this is because I'm gonna be able to modify it. There's actually a video on YouTube where a guy takes a cheap, De I think it was a DeWalt planer. If you do a search on YouTube for um, a planer beam, or a beam planer or something like that you'll find it the guy he inverted a he inverted a DeWalt planer um, with these it has the same kind of adjustable height uh, and he inverted it so he could actually plane his beams now if you want you can buy a beam planer I think Woodmiser, Woodmiser makes one uh, it's like 20 or 30 inch but it's gonna run you about twenty thousand dollars so I don't really have twenty thousand dollars sitting around for a, a beam planer. Uh, the reason I'm gonna do a beam planer and you know put the time into making the modification and everything is because uh, when you run this planer on a track system, which is what the sawmill a bandsaw bandsaw mill comes on, it comes on a track system. Um, you can actually get your planer to work like a joiner, so it'll take out any warp twist you know imperfections in your beam and give you a true beam because you run the planer on the top um, of the beam and the so the beam will sit underneath just kind of like it is except for the beam or the planer follows the track system and your track system is true and your beam is clamped uh, into your track system so you'll be able to square it off your track system I don't know it, that's kind of complicated the way I'm explaining it. Um, I don't know if it's gonna make sense or not uh, without actually showing you how to do it. But like I was saying, the reason I bought this is all of your adjustments are accessible. And I mean, this is chain drive, this is bicycle chain. So if I wanna change the, the links in this chain or change the, the sprockets, I can actually go and, and just take sprockets off of a bike. Um, you know, off the rear derailleur or whatever, add in tensioners, uh, 
do any kind of modifications that I want uh, with this. I can I can still use the height adjustment. I can still use the planer head. All this stuff is removable um, with without having to worry about compromising the integrity of the actual planer. Whereas if you tear into one of the new plastic planers, you run the risk of uh, damaging it. I mean, to the point that it's not going to run true um, with this with this old style stuff. It, it'll run really nice and I have I can totally customize this to do what I want uh, if I want to change swap out the engine and use a different in, or swap out the motor and use a gas powered engine I can do that and run it on belts run it on chains run it on electricity whatever but I, I kind of wanted to just show what it looks like in the beginning so when you see it in the end uh, you know, you'll be able to appreciate the work that I put into it to get it to do what I want instead of just going and spending $20,000 when you can spend 70 bucks and do a little, a little welding on my $25 welder that I actually got for free to get, get it to do the same thing that a $20,000 planer would do. And then you can see the finish work that I'll get out of it too. Um, it's going to look professional. You'll ne you won't be able to see the difference. And I guarantee that all the beams will be square and true and clean. And I can even do, if I wanted to do uh, you know, real big uh, molding and everything, I can do, do it with it too. But you can see down there, that's the shed I'm working on. I did all that work with the chainsaw mill. It's all from scratch lumber. I cut all the trees down and milled all the timbers, did all the sanding and whatever. The problem I found with all those, the, the six by fours and stuff, four by fours is I didn't have a planer at the time. So um, some of it didn't come together very well because it wasn't square. And that's what, uh, that's what this is for is to eliminate that problem. Technically I could have done it all on a joiner if I had an eight inch joiner, but I don't have one of those either. But with this, I'll be able to do the joining and the planing. But I figured I'd show everybody my my new pride and joy. I mean, it looks beat up as hell, but anybody that knows anything about woodworking can tell you that uh, this is a hell of a planer, and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be fun once I get it running. All right, so I was getting ready to actually upload the video that I made it, or that I recorded a little bit ago. And I, I, I realized I forgot to talk about a couple things. Uh, <clears throat> if you watch that video, and I'll try to put it in the links, um, or the beam planer that that guy did. Um, so it's actually the video that inspired me to do this. He's, he's using that Delta, it's like a cheap Delta planer. And I don't know, I, I think those things are like one horse or something like that. They don't have much power. And if you watch his video, you can hear... Um, you can hear it bogged down when it actually starts taking taking some meat out of the beam that he's planning. And I knew uh, when I wanted to do this, <clears throat> that five horsepower, hold on a second. That five horsepower was the way to go. Um, the, the extra power will keep it smooth and keep you from getting tear out and all that business. So uh, I was really looking for a, a, a strong, a strong engine planer to, to, to go ahead and just tear through the beams and that's why I went with this one. <clears throat> uh, one other thing that I didn't talk about or show you was just that you know the way the height adjustment works but it's kind of hard to do it when you don't have it right but you can see it still it still works pretty well or really well for that matter. Um, and the other thing that I didn't talk about is uh, with this drive system when the planer's actually going, you can see these little wheels here. These ones, the feeder wheels, they turn with the planer head, and there's a ratio, there's a gear ratio that goes with that. And if you watch that Dewalt video, you can see that his, the way he has it set, he feeds his material or his planer along that beam using these. 
but that's because he's got a cheap planer you know with this one I'll be able to take this gear ratio these chains right here and feed it down onto the track system with, with wheels that'll clamp onto the track system and then the planer will drive itself along the beam system the track system with this so anytime there's a low spot in your beam if you watch that video you'll see the planer stops and he has to kind of move it to get it to re-engage well when you move it by hand you're changing the feed ratio and you're going to get tear out on your beam or you're you're going to uh, get burnout or whatever you want to call it. it basically you're going to get imperfections so by using this chain system and this belt drive and the gear ratio that's already set up by the manufacturer uh, with the track system um, you're going to get a more consistent plane and uh, that's one thing to look at is to have access to this this ratio and to keep things consistent I mean this is a pretty technical build but um, it's something to look for and it's something I definitely look for when I went after the planer and that's why I like these old models is because you have access to all this stuff so I thought I would add that just uh, just something to keep in mind if this is a project you're gonna work on or a project you're considering um, the more control you have over um, all the different processes associated with the planer um, the better off you'll be um, for a professional outcome with your product so uh, we'll see where this ends up in the video I might just have to splice it kind of funny but something to consider all right so just one more thing before I let you go uh, I made this those videos about three days ago and this weekend uh, I got a couple more scores that you'd probably be interested in uh, first one is this right here it's a 16 speed heavy duty drill press if you can read English you'll see right here central machinery it still has the um, bid owner on it all this stuff 1981 American made look at that Hollywood California I'm pretty excited about this uh, you can see up here it's got all the different gear ratios and stuff like that she runs like a champ look at that so uh, yeah everything works drill uh, drill chuck um, heavy duty super heavy duty I got it because it's a floor mounted one um, everything works fine oh I still got the clamp on I need to oil this up it's a little dry it probably hasn't been used in a while so um, machinery people out there I, I urge you to take a guess how much you think I paid for this I'll tell you right now it's worth about uh, 500 to 700 dollars brand new uh, working condition I paid a hundred dollars pretty pretty pumped on that and I got one more score this right here you probably saw it when I was walking around it's a DeWalt set uh, let me put this down uh, if you know anything about this uh, brand new this goes for five hundred dollars okay uh, I got these blades right here they don't come with it um, I'm not sure what the actual price is these are bimetal blades there's quite a few in there uh, a reciprocating saw a skill saw a small one a light and a drill I'll actually put you right here. this is the reciprocating saw she works a lot of power. She works. She works. I'm not done yet. Look at that. Now here's the, here's the kicker. So I got all these blades. saw blades and I got four batteries 
four good condition batteries and two chargers, one with the reconditioning thing. And I don't know if I told you, I don't think I told you the price. I got it for 170 bucks. Just the, the reciprocating saw right there is like a $200 thing, $300 thing. So anyway, maybe I'll talk about this later. Uh, but I wanted to introduce it now so that you know some. I got more stuff coming up. And right there, I got the bands, uh, the sawmill running. Um, it's a mess right now. I, I ran out of time. But anyway, I'll let you go. Bye.